AI is absolutely everywhere these days, and usually it's just a buzzword. Like, remember when Spotify tried to add AI to its music recommendation system? So you're saying it just recommends music based on what I've already listened to? No, it's so much more than that. It's AI. Prediction technology. Integrated history search analysis. Artificial intelligence. Futuristic advanced algorithm. Leveraging synergy. We're talking like nanotech for music. Hey. I. So in conclusion, it's going to be able to predict what you might like based on the things you've already listened to. Pfft. First, we put Wi-Fi on everything, like dishwashers, and now AI is going to be the new cool thing. But it's not all marketing. AI is having very serious consequences in some industries already, and some people have serious concerns. So let's talk about the legalities and the ethics, and then answer the question, is AI coming for your job? And more importantly, how can you protect yourself and even benefit from this new technology? One of the most famous uses of AI right now is generative pictures. Note, I did not call it art, and I will get there. There has been a lot of anger from the artist community over the last several months, as it was revealed that everything they ever made and posted online was used by AI database programs. It was all used as part of a massive training data set for machine learning. Things ain't what they used to be. They understandably felt a bit violated and taken advantage of as even watermarked images were used as a part of this mass scraping of references. Wait. That's illegal. Many artists are seeking some kind of compensation or a way to opt out, though that might be difficult, especially for the Lion 5B data set, which powers a lot of AI image generators, because it doesn't directly save and reference the images. Those images were used to create new data that now powers the image generator. So that leads us to the question of legality and whether it was allowable for those data sets to collect all of those images from across the internet without permission from their authors. So far, courts have not finally decided, but even we non-lawyer peons can speculate right? If you go looking for information about this, and I recommend that you do, you're going to find a lot of talk about whether AI images qualify as a fair use case of the originals. Two big cases get tossed around often when talking about this, and both involve Google. One was when they were sued by Perfect 10 magazine because Google was cataloging and displaying tiny thumbnail images of the Perfect 10 ladies from the magazine. Courts ruled that it was fair use because Google was organizing the information and thumbnails for search, and so the purpose was changed. It would be a fair use of your thumb to hit that like button. Boom! Another suit came at them from the Authors Guild when they began cataloging basically every book ever and displaying little sample images with select quotes from the books. Again, courts ruled fair use because they were changing the intent and thus changing the work. Fair use is a tricky subject and it goes on a case-by-case -case basis, but generally it needs to meet four fundamental factors. Purpose and character of use, nature of the copyrighted work, amount of portion taken, and the effect of the use on the potential market. Purpose and character is usually pretty easy to spot. In the Google examples, it was very clear they were using the images for a different purpose, so they transformed the work enough to avoid copyright. Transforming the work somehow is very important. It's how I get away with using copyrighted clips from the movies and shows that I review, unless they happen to be made by WB or HBO, because those motherfuckers. Since I am making a commentary on the work, and I'm usually just using the video and not the audio, I have transformed it. Or it's okay if I use something to illustrate a point that is different from the original. Isn't that right, Walter? You're goddamn right. Of course I am. This is also why parody gets a special exemption, because it is turning the purpose of the original work upside down. As for the nature of the copyrighted work, they were technically publicly available. A lot of this stuff was scraped from art websites like DeviantArt, where the creators posted them voluntarily. AI companies will likely be able to say that since the art was displayed publicly, they were allowed to use it for reference and training. Amount taken will be very difficult to prove, and so that's likely going to favor AI. Remember, when you ask AI to make a picture for you, it's pulling from its own learning data that was developed by looking at billions of images. I don't think it's possible for the program to identify how much of any one piece it used as a reference, and it certainly won't be possible for any one artist to prove that a substantial amount of one of their pieces was used. This is another part of the fair use law that protects yours truly. Typically, I only use a maximum of about 13-ish seconds of any one clip to avoid being accused of using too large a portion. The only thing artists would be able to do 
is attack on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, imagine that I asked AI to make me a picture of a cartoon duck wearing a sailor outfit, and then I tried to sell that on t-shirts, Disney would almost certainly have a case against me. But if I asked AI to make me a picture of a cartoon moose in the style of Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, there likely isn't a thing Disney can do, because I haven't actually taken any part of their copyrighted works, I've only borrowed their style, and you cannot trademark a style. With my zero amount of legal background, this pillar of fair use feels the most in favor of AI companies because they aren't actually taking any portion of the original work. You gotta remember, AI pictures are not a collage or a mashup of old pictures. They really are brand new original productions that are used using color and pattern data that was developed by referencing all of the original pictures. Now, if that's the strongest argument, this final pillar is probably the weakest, and that is the potential effect on the market. A very strong argument can be made that AI pictures are going to have a negative impact on artists. I think that's pretty obvious. The big question is going to be whether that negative impact will be offset by the general public good. Remember that case against Google with the books? One of the reasons the judge used to rule in Google's favor was the significant public benefit that would be had by organizing and displaying those quotes. It seems like AI companies are going to have to argue that they are providing some kind of service to the world that outweighs the potential damage to artists. Now, aside from fair use, if AI pictures are found to be specifically derivative of the original works, that could be very dangerous for all creative fields. Am I not making these videos with influence from all the YouTube I've ever watched? Which is a lot, by the way, a scary amount. Really. Does any author write without pulling from the hundreds or thousands of stories they've read throughout their life? Do artists create without iterating on the things that they have seen? It could be a serious problem if the Copyright Office deems this mass reference program to be defined as derivative. I mean, Tolkien's estate could sue pretty much the entire fantasy novel industry for pulling from his version of dwarves and elves. So this sounds a little scary so far, because AI is going to replace us all and it's already got Billions of images they'll never be deleted! Well, there's one thing stopping AI images from putting every artist out of work. You can't copyright any of this stuff. The U.S. Patent Office has already issued clear guidelines saying that AI-generated work does not meet the threshold for human creativity and cannot be copyrighted. So at the very least, you would have to alter what AI spits out enough to justify to that office that enough of you is in the work to justify a copyright. So why aren't AI images actually art? Because art has intent and meaning. Child scribbles are not art. Monkeys hitting typewriters for infinity will not create Shakespeare. Even if a replica happens, it doesn't mean something. But it might still be marketable. Plenty of natural items are sold every day with minimal modification. Driftwood, geodes, cool rocks, Fulgurite, which Sweet Home Alabama convinced me was gorgeous, and it actually looks like this. How much of my life is a lie? I trusted you, Josh Lucas! Listen, Mysteries of Lore wasn't your fault, but this is strike two. I'm not gonna let you hurt me again. Sometimes it doesn't matter if a thing is art in the high-minded way we think of it. It just matters if it has value to someone else. If you really want to get into it, art is just creative use of the materials that you have, and now your toolkit includes AI. There's always going to be a market for real art, but there will also be a market for cheap, mass-produced crap. Each consumer is different. Some of us have feral children, and IKEA is very replaceable. Let's recap part one real quick. AI image generators do what we do, referencing and creating, but at scale. And that's unsettling. It's not fun, but it doesn't seem to be illegal. It does feel vaguely icky, doesn't it? Many, many court cases in the coming years will give us a more definitive answer, but for now, we know that AI work cannot be copyrighted, so some form of human interaction has to be involved beyond just a text prompt. You know, there's a very philosophical argument to be had whether AI will top out at some point unless we humans continue to be creative and invent new things, which AI does not seem to be able to do, but that's for a different video. There's also an interesting question about what will happen when too many AI pictures get out on the internet and start training new AI models. In much the same way that royal inbreeding historically created genetic problems, AI training on work created by other AI could lead to a homogenizing of images. Now, if any of this sounds scary, it's because you're not thinking creatively, which leads neatly to part two, will AI take your job and what can you do to benefit 
benefit yourself. And before I answer that question, I need to go top off my tea, which is the um, it's the the organic peach cobbler. It's peachy, it's spicy. Oh, it's so good. Okay, I'm back. I'm steeping some calm chamomile because uh, that rose apothecary cup I was using holds three bags of tea. So if I make three more bags of caffeinated stuff, I'm gonna hear my own pulse and smell colors. So will AI take your job? Yes. And no, as with all technological advancement, AI is gonna call some jobs, but as with all advancement, it's going to A, take low level non-creative jobs and B, create new jobs to take their place. The good news is if you ain't scared, AI can be a tool for you to advance in certain fields more quickly. AI feels like early internet, which I have some experience with. I'm, uh, I'm older than Google, so that's cool. The internet certainly destroyed a lot of jobs. Call centers used to be larger, mail rooms used to be larger, retail shopping used to be larger. Yeah, these industries got hit hard by the advancement of the internet, but you know what? SEO manager, social media manager, bloggers, influencers, most tech jobs didn't exist either. People like me are making a full or partial living working for themselves with the power and reach of the internet. Entire new economic sectors have been born. You watching this right now can go start an internet business and sell pretty much anything and it won't cost much to get started. So to me, AI feels like that. But for the tech world, a lot of people see programming and digital artistry as these insurmountable specialized skills they could never hope to attain. I felt that way about programming when I first started. Like, oh, it's so mysterious and technical. No, it isn't. You can download some software and start doing it right now. In fact, it's so accessible, you don't even need the special software. When I was learning programming, I used to take code puzzles to my day job and solve them in Notepad and compile them there. Every edition of Windows has a built-in C-sharp compiler. I'm not saying I recommend it, I'm just saying you could do it. Now AI can write code or code examples for you. It's gonna help you learn it faster because it takes some of the grunt work out and shows you the correct way to do it. AI will show you the most popular way to solve a problem because it was trained on public resources like Stack Overflow. You can learn a programming language or a foreign language or any other subject quickly because AI will translate it into the most common usage and put it in plain words. Now this all sounds great, but there's one key piece of information you need to use this tool to learn why, not just what. In the future, there are going to be people that have used AI to find an answer, and there are going to be people that have used AI to understand things. The latter is always valuable, and the former is gets automated. Now, with the amount of knowledge that I have about programming, I would get replaced for sure. King, I heard somewhere that if you flex too hard, you can pass out. Can I write what you tell me to write? Yeah, I could do the kinds of tasks that you would give a junior developer intern. Since I learned C-sharp for funsies and I've never worked professionally on a larger project, I lack that experience and perspective that would make me valuable in an AI world. The skill floor is gonna be higher. Moving beyond that is gonna require creative thinking, not just the ability to prompt some lines from AI, and that scares people. Programming has always been this way, though. Let's take a little trip back in time. Did you know that programs used to be written on cards like this? punch cards where you would have to pop out little sequences and then you'd have to stack them up several inches thick and feed these guys into a machine. Whole jobs were dedicated to storing and curating these card decks, but those went away when magnetic storage allowed the data to be stored digitally. Stuff like this always cuts back on these basic jobs, but introduces room for new jobs. Then you could have more programmers. Everybody could have their own machine instead of the programmers waiting in line to feed their card stack into the machine. Advancements like this are always happening. Several years ago, a development program started including code completion. The program would helpfully offer to complete half a line for you. And, and there are shortcuts that reduce the amount of time that you're physically hand coding every single thing. Now, instead of completing a line of code, maybe AI will write 10 or 20 lines for you. It's going to be a tool to speed up your workflow. And that is going to allow for larger and more complex programs to be built. And those will make for brand new jobs. But programs Programming, like artistry, requires a kind of thinking that a machine cannot replicate. It can replicate parts of it, but an intelligent being will still be required to put them together in a meaningful way. Also, as it is today, experience lends to decision-making capabilities that machines don't have. The point here is, you cannot be content with just doing basic tasks that can be automated. You need to understand how it fits together to make something bigger. The good news is, it's not that hard to surpass people. You and I both know that the majority of people are lazy and are getting 
to get left behind. So if you put a little bit of effort into investing into yourself, you will be ahead of the pack when the AI revolution happens. I'm begging you, invest in yourself. Technological progress always raises the bar for skill and knowledge. And if you aren't improving yourself, you might look up one day to realize that you're behind and it's too late. Not only that, you just need to take care of your brain. You eat right, you exercise, don't you? At least you know you're supposed to because it's good for your health. Well, your brain is no different. And most of modern entertainment is the psychological equivalent of a Twinkie. And you know damn well it's not good for you. Yes, there are affiliate links for learning in the description because it's stuff that I already use myself. Like whenever I want to explore a foreign language or get a lecture on like science or history or whatever, I use Audible. Like this one called Particle Physics for Non-Physicists. My knowledge of that subject is about the size of a lepton, which is to say I know just enough to make Make that one joke. Whenever I want to learn a new skill, I do it on Udemy. When I was learning C Sharp, part of my regimen was to make video games with this program called Unity because I wanted to learn the language and have a good time at the same time. It's in the description, you know the drill. Part of the fun of this being an affiliate link instead of an actual paid ad is I can tell you, do not pay full price at Udemy. They have sales like twice a month. Beyond those two, you know, there are a ton of options for learning stuff, not the least of which is the app you're on right now. Well, now AI is one of those resources. Tell it what you want to learn and let these powerful information aggregators deliver you the knowledge. You know experience matters. Look at general contractors and interior designers. There are plenty of retail stores that sell crap you can put inside your house and Home Depot has everything you could ever need to complete a renovation project. So why do these jobs still exist? Because people who have experience and big picture perspective will always be valuable. You ever walk into somebody's house when they obviously just bought a bunch of random crap at Target and Home Goods? I had my basement finished last year, and of course I went with a general contractor because I can just tell them this is kind of what I have in mind, and they can fill in the gaps and make helpful recommendations for things I didn't even know about. The best recommendations are when they go, I know you think you want this, I'm telling you that you don't. If you're an artist or a programmer or anybody worried about AI, you're going to have to bring that perspective to the table if you don't want to get replaced. You've got to be able to interpret idiot clients like me who just have a vague idea about a feeling about what we want. You ever see a blog that's obviously a Wix stock piece that the owner thought they could just spruce up themselves? The job of designer isn't going anywhere. And back to artists, yeah, AI is going to take some art jobs in the same way that Pottery Barn and Pier 1 took art jobs. Fast fashion and fast art are going to exist, and there is a segment of the population that just doesn't need your custom piece. Each use case is different. When I wanted figurines for my kids' D&D game, their player characters, I paid more at Hero Forge. Random enemies, I used this tube of gray plastic fantasy creatures. Sometimes you commission a custom epoxy river table, and other times a stock piece from Walmart will do. That's AI stuff. It's the low level non-custom stuff that's cheap and easy. However, you skilled artists can take that cheap crap and upcycle it into something and your client's not going to know the difference. See, it's a tool for you. Like we said, AI stuff cannot be copyrighted. So the role of concept artist is not going anywhere. But now you can use AI to generate concepts for your concept. Creative artists of the future will know how to make creative queries and get multiple different results and get inspired by the crazy crap AI spits out. AI will be creating new jobs because it's going to bring advancement closer to people without them having to be tech savvy the same way the internet did. All tech does this. Filmmaking used to be a really hard thing to break into. Now the tools and information you need are everywhere. You can record on the phone that's in your pocket, hang up a curtain, find an old bookshelf, boom, you're making videos. Nobody can stop you. So yeah, AI might kill some jobs, but it's pretty cool to know that you can take advantage and use it to improve yourself for the new ones that are going to come along. Now, tell me your thoughts. Is this doomsday? Are you excited? What do you think the future of AI holds? I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.